So uh, this is a um, um, tutorial and um, it's uh, kind of, um, so the goal here is to um, get used to the way of uh, making use of the Schrodinger equation to the extent that we can. And one of the ways we can make use of Schrodinger equation like this is um, uh, take uh, plugging in known solutions or you know pr plugging in suspected solutions to see if it's an answer solution or not. So, um, so let me just uh, write out this Schrodinger equation on the side so that as I scroll down, there's a copy of Schrodinger equation on the side. Uh, I'm just going to use H bar notation, but the system still does not accept H bar. So um, you'll have to write it out this way. For the purpose of writing, I'll write down minus H bar squared over 2M um, partial second uh, position derivative. And there's a plus uh, of V of X, but that's zero. So that's why I'm not writing it down. That's equal to um, I H bar partial time derivative of, oh wait, I should use capital Psi here. Okay, and our proposed uh, plane wave solution is this. Um, psi of X and T is some amplitude times the complex exponential of I KX minus Omega T. Um, hmm. Yeah, yeah, so, okay. Uh, the question says, evaluate the left-hand side of the time-dependent uh, Schrodinger equation for the given wave function. Um, okay, so I'm taking two derivatives. Now here, um, the fact that this is, um, this is an exponential actually makes my job easier because with the exponentials, I without writing down anything, I know what happens. The derivative of exponential is the same thing, uh, same thing. So really all I have to worry about is applying the chain rule. So I have to take the derivative of the inside. And for this function, it's constructed with a simple enough of an inside that when I take the derivative of inside, really all I bring out is the factor i k. So each derivative does that. So when I take two, two derivatives, I have taken out a factor of minus k squared or you know, i k squared, which becomes minus k squared. So, so it's uh, basically this, except I have an additional factor of minus k squared. So it should simply be, so minus times minus, it's plus. So I have h bar or h over two pi squared times k squared. That's what came down um, without the minus sign, minus sign got canceled, divided by 2n. Um, oh, and I have to write, I after taking those two derivatives, the function still remains there. So I have to write out the function. Um, I think here I supposed to just write out the form of the function, a times, uh, let me swap between the two. I think it might accept the exponential as a numerical function. We'll see. Kx minus omega. Wait, omega is not one of the variables. Oh, I guess it just wants me to use a psi. All right, then I'm just gonna use psi. <laughs> just I'm letting that be my guide. So it should be the psi. Um, um, yeah, formatting, rewrite, uh, yeah, okay, okay, I already told people to do that as psi in your answer. Um, I forget what that bug is. Um, I think it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine either way. Okay, let me submit it. So that, <laughs> uh, the bug might have to be, uh, it might have been, it wasn't letting me specify one of these, I don't remember. Uh, I'm pretty sure that particular bug is fixed. Evaluate the right-hand side of the time-dependent Schrodinger equation for the given side, simplify the resulting expression and enter your answer below. 
It's the same deal. Uh, on the right hand side, I have a single time derivative. And again, this being exponential makes it super easy. Uh, it's um, the outside uh, derivative does nothing. All I have to worry about is the, the chain rule and the inside. And the expression here of time is simple enough that all I get of the derivative of the inside is i times minus omega. And that's it. So I have minus i omega multiplied it to this outside here, i h bar minus i times i gives me plus one. So all I have left is h bar times omega. Let me write that out. So h bar, uh, or in the way I have to write it this way, times omega. So. Oh, oh, and <laughs> I almost forgot my wave function side. Yeah, that should be correct. Great. Okay, um, so far so good. Um, so after having done A and B, now what I can do, so this was the left-hand side of the equation. This is the right-hand side of the equation. I can equate these two. And so it says equate the equation to write down an equation below. It says simplify the equation by canceling out anything that can be canceled out. Oh, except for the factors of h, h bar. Um, so I think that was a, just a very long way of saying cancel out the psi. <laughs> so, because I think that's the only thing that cancels out other than the h bars. So, um, okay, let me write down the equation. So I have h bar squared times k squared over 2m is equal to uh, this is the equation for my, hope I programmed it correctly, uh, h bar times omega. And I've canceled out psi. Okay, good. <laughs> um, finally, uh, substituting these quantum mechanical assumptions. Momentum is given by h bar k, and energy is given by uh, h bar omega. So you can see here, oh, right-hand side is my energy. And on the left-hand side, I have h bar squared times k squared, so it's a p squared. So momentum squared over 2n is equal to energy. And, um, and I guess I don't have any comment here. Um, this is really, uh, this expression, when you look at it and think about it, it's saying uh, uh, kinetic energy, uh, which, so, you know, I, I think up until this point, you are used to writing kinetic energy in this form as one half mv squared. And once we get into quantum mechanics, it's uh, more convenient to uh, express V as momentum divided by M, because really in quantum mechanics, it's a momentum that's a more fundamental, useful variable. So we do that, this expression becomes momentum squared over 2m. So this expression is just saying, hey, my kinetic energy is my total energy because for this particular example, uh, we explicitly said the potential energy to be zero. So, 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 so this is what I'm hoping to demonstrate with these tutorials that um, Schrodinger equation looks formidable when you look at it. It's a, diff it's a partial differential equation. Um, in terms of solving partial differential equations, that's like upper division gradual level topic. Uh, but in terms of the concepts that it's expressing, it's uh, actually the simple familiar concepts that you already know. So 